My name is Marky Costello, and I own a company called Creative Management Entertainment Group, CMEG. Marky Costello is one of Hollywood's top casting agents and managers. Marky is genuine showbiz royalty. What's up? Clean up your cups. Oh shit, she on her way up? Waiting Marky's arrival. Hiding spots, hiding spots. I can see her coming. Just know that my stuff is in here temporarily. What? One more. Some people call it C Meg, but the thought of that makes me think of Charlie Sheen for some reason. I like to call it CMEG, Creative Management Entertainment Group. We manage brands such as like the Griddle Cafe is a brand. We manage the owner. We manage hosts, on-air hosts like Jason Kennedy on E! News, Nicole DeBow on Entertainment Tonight, Todd Newton who was just nominated for a daytime Emmy. So we have like a poo-poo platter of on-air hosts, brands, talent that we manage and then I have a school called become a host and my school is pretty much huge every host you see on TV has started in the boot camp we have two spots for you cool. right here can you believe it do you want to sit together I coach privately names such as Khloe Kardashian look at me now Bill and Melinda Gates D square the designers Ashley Hamilton CeeLo name it I have pretty much either casted it, taught it, managed it. People come to me usually in a crisis. Wouldn't that be a great brand, like the Handy Hottie? Yeah, but you're not, you're not handy. So there goes that. Visually, I get you're beautiful. When you put all the other stuff on, now you're a slut. Remember when Hollywood used to be this elite club? See, it used to be to make it in Hollywood, you had to have talent and lots of it. Not to mention dedication, hard work, perseverance. Because the state of fame is in deep doo-doo. People now think that they can get famous by having a sex tape, or they do a stint on a reality show. They're a bachelorette number 16 on The Bachelor, and they all of a sudden should have their own talk show. They should be a celebrity. And frankly, I'm sick of it. People are becoming famous for not having any talent. And I'm here to resurrect it. Talent must come back. Remember in the 80s when Rob Lowe made a sex tape and it actually ruined his career? It took him 10 years to get back on top. Now you make a sex tape and you become a household name overnight. We need to get back to the 80s where sex tapes were career ruiners, not career makers. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take talent that probably had a better chance of being struck by lightning than making it and I'm going to rehab them, yes. I'm gonna fix their hair, their nails. I said 15. Oh, 15, okay. No, lose 15 yeah, pounds. I, you know, I would love to. Get your hair cut like in a night, like color, get the color organized. Get your skin organized. I'm saying to you, this is what it takes to be in front of the camera. I don't make the rules. We all have to play by them. Welcome to Hollywood. Most importantly, I'm gonna give them a tool. The state of fame is in an emergency, and I'm here to save it. Why me? Because I'm the gatekeeper. Who else but me? My grandpa was Lou Costello. My step grandpa was Dean Martin. My dad is a record producer. I'm born and raised in this kooky, crazy business, okay? My mother was a casting director. I eat, sleep, and drink this world. I think a lot of people want to be trained by Marky because she is the best in the business. You can build a brand. Take uh, some crazy girl I just met yesterday in my office. Her name was Josie. She was on Dr. Phil, did some reality show. I'm Josie. I'm 28 years old. I'm spoiled and entitled, and there's nothing wrong with that. And my point to you is, I feel like you've gotten the wrong information. And she thinks she's a star. Or they call me a reality oh my star. God. She told me I'm a star. You disgust me. Please sit down. Do you think I'm beautiful, Dr. Phil? Phil? Your reality is almost a tad delusional. Let's How stop. many people have been on Dr. Okay, Phil? Okay, so but by you insulting me and telling me that I'm, I'm not delusional, I'm telling you, you into hell. I, I take people that have do nothing and get them on television. Do you think I have talent, or I mean, do you think I don't know? I haven't seen you do anything. I'm never, ever, 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 ever going to learn because you refuse to listen. So you think I'm insane? Do you know the definition? I asked you a question. No. I didn't say. Do you see how you inter? I asked you a question, and you go, do you think I'm insane? This is why Please. Hollywood is in a state of shock. Okay. Hollywood needs to be rescued from people like you because you're not listening. I am you're listening. not hearing it. You're not a reality star. And then proceeded to cry hysterically because nothing's happened for her. And it, like... So you didn't get the show? No, I didn't get the bar. He said, I'm leaving you. I will never let anybody hurt you. 
I want you just to take this serious and calm down. You're never going to have to go back to people like Kelly Cadrillo and her Dr. Bill. I think the misconception is people want to graduate from USC on Monday and be running IBM on Thursday, yeah, and there's this little thing called work. My point to you is... I mean, that's really mean. Not mean. This I've is never, the reality. No, Unfortunately, yeah, it's never, the reality. And my name is Marky. I've been a rehabber like a house in Los Feliz that hasn't been occupied in 40 years, that's infested with termites, and that's sliding down the hill, I'm gonna rehab it. So one buyer will wanna live in her home. The home of Josie. You know what I'm gonna do for you? I'm gonna let you take my boot camp for free. Big time skin, get your hair. It's a visual medium, these girls. I know, you're absolutely right. Yeah, the state of fame is scary. It's time for a reality check. This is a show business. You can't act. He's gonna be driving on the wrong side of the one. Because fame is a bitch. I have a passion for this business like nobody else. I think it's hard when you come in and you have your t-shirts and your long shirts over your t-shirts and this is gonna be hard to hear, but you gotta grow up. Yeah, I agree with that, but you know what I think my problem is? I think I'm playing it too safe. Baby, you ain't gonna do Team Nick when you're 45. Being in front of the camera is a privilege, not a right, because to be in front of the camera means you get this huge platform to show the world who you are. So all the people that work in my office, whether it's Kim Lai or Marcy or Becky or JC or Linnell or Kyle or Cassandra, they all have the desire to be in front of the camera. So what's great about working at my company is they get to learn firsthand of what it takes to make it in this town. I emailed Oprah. Did I tell you guys I emailed Oprah? I heard she was going to answer my email. We all hear what like, we want to hear. Right. Did okay. she say answer or like read? Becky, she said she was going to read. She's got to write Marky okay. back. And I'm going to come any day. I know how to make people have their dreams come true. Whether they take my boot camp, whether I manage them, whether they work in my office, it's what I do. I have two beautiful boys, a 14-year-old and a two-year-old, and I have, well, actually I have three beautiful boys. <laughs> I have my fiance, Tommy, who is 42, who's an artist and a lacrosse coach, and the father of my son, Finn, who's two. I am the balance. Our SWAT team is on the way. Great about bringing the kids by and uh, making sure that uh, they have mommy time and daddy time. <laughs> yummy. yummy! He's crazy and nutty, but he really is sweet. And yet, we put it all together and make it work somehow. And I have the beautiful Finn Patrick Johnson, who's two years old, who I tell you, this kid is going to be an actor. And I'm the first person to say, never put your kids in show business. I never want to be a stage mom. I never want my kids to go down that road. But by hook or by crook, this two-year-old, I can tell it's in his genes. He is going to act. What are you doing? My 14-year-old is a musician and a really good student and actually loves movies and has been doing movie reviews. He really wants to do that. How bizarre is that? I guess it's true that saying, your kids pick who their parents are. I'm proud to have her as a mom and I think she did a very good job with her career and her family. I don't know. God has a weird way of working everything out. I don't want to be a host. I want to be more of a movie critic. Mom, look at this. As long as I can get my career started, I'm not living at my mom's house when I'm 30. Point is, I love my family. I wouldn't do what I do. I wouldn't work as hard. Are you excited for your surprise? Tommy's yeah. getting a surprise. Yay! I get excited over cupcakes. Kick the patty, whack, give your dog a Let's see your bumper. Let's see your bumper. Wow! Wow! Perfect. Yeah, and, uh, we did the whole car. We did the whole car. We painted it. That's sick. It's sick. I thought it was uh, actually someone else's. And I'm going to pass it down to Finney one day because it's 20 years old now, almost. So, yeah, man. I'm psyched. Thank you, baby. That was a good one. I love you. I love my family of workers. I love all the people that work for me. I've been here for probably over three years now. And three, two, it's like Sesame Street, but for older people. So that is my passion on the side of my work. I'm the only person on the planet who's done both parts by themselves at the same time I'm proving to you. Oh, the first base! Who is on first? Who's wife? Yes. Well, after all, the man deserves it. Who deserves it? Yeah, absolutely. And I go on the whole time. But most importantly, if I couldn't do it without the staff, I couldn't do it without my family, I couldn't do what I do without this wonderful support system. I bring mess to a very clean environment. I think she has some kind of 
OCD form of some sort. It's so dusty. What the fuck is in there? What the fuck is in the microwave? So, um, yes. The neighbor's upset that you're cussing. I've been here 15 years. Throw that away. Coming into our office complaining. Where's the top to this? Oh, it's under my desk. Coming in to say what we can and can't say. Why is this dirty? Oh, oh. We are going to say the word fuck. So get used to it. Thank you. These are called stains. I call them stains for a reason because they literally stain your clothes. The market is like taking, it's like that old story where that woman sews that straw into gold, right? We will be right back with the, with the two eligible. <laughs> okay, so when you get like that, plug back into your audience. Remember, yes. it's not about you. Okay. okay. Takes those people, uh, people just off the bus here, you know, with probably, probably weeds them out, but there's people that have legitimate talent. They probably just don't know what it is or which direction to put it in. Take Lene Dunn. You know, she's hosting on MTV. She has her own show, 10 on Top. And I'm living my dream, all because of Margie Costello. And I think she pretty much, well, you know, points them in the right direction and gives them like the Tony Robbins of your life. This week we are tackling infidelity. Oh, We're, God, no. How do we tackle infidelity? No, no, no. We're different than everybody else. We're focusing on the women, meaning the women that she, yep. and we're focusing on what they really get. There are a few diamonds in the rough that actually do have talent, and I'm going to make it my business to find them. Hosting is a great balancing act, and to be a great host is to really make it not about you, but about your audience. You know, like, hey, this is what you should be doing, and this is how you can do it and through all the entertainment medias, whether it be, you know, TV, blogging, Facebook. Hi, I'm Erica Schaefer. Uh, I've been with Marky Signed for a month now, and I've been in her classes for about six months, and she's incredible. I mean, she has molded me into a very good host. So one host will be talking about NFL, and the other one's like going, hey, here's the cool things in the town. So maybe the audience will never get to Ann Arbor, but through they will for you. And what are you thinking? Uh, Ann Arbor? I wish I knew what the hell Andrew was talking about. All I'm here to tell you is about Ann Arbor. That is my job today. I remember I met Jason Kennedy like eight years ago in one of her classes, and he was, uh, you know, you could tell right away that dude had talent. And sure enough, he's like on E Entertainment. Marky made my dreams come true. I have an eye for talent. Why do you want fame and fortune and money and success? What does it mean to you? Ask yourself, be honest. Even if it's a shallow and vacuous answer, okay? Um, because the reality is we're living in a world where people can get famous from a reality show, a sex tape. It's easier to get famous now, but it's harder to sustain. Do you ever worry about your moment having passed? <laughs> it's easier to break with a brand because we have the internet. You can create it. But once you break, can you sustain? You can if you have all of this knowledge. Everybody is acting out, and somebody has to be responsible, and that somebody is me. I think it's my duty to the police the block. Stop sign! Kim, she's our gay-asian, because she's a gay-asian lesbian. I had to put this bird on the stop sign, hoping people would see the bird and stop. I actually thought of, like, all that vibrating, pulsating metal <laughs> between my legs. Family show, family oh, family show. Hey! Stop sign! Do you think it's easy licking two lollies? No, it's hard to lick lollies. Agents want to be me. Agents want to be Marky the manager. You know why? Because Marky the manager can do whatever she wants. Did you get that? Get her. I'm Marky Costello, and welcome to Acting Out.